In this video, we'll import a JPEG of a hand-sketched floor plan, scale it, and model it. You can drag a JPEG right into SketchUp. You don't have to go to File Import. It comes in with the Scale tool attached, but we're going to use the tape measure to scale this. I need to find a known size, and it looks like it's 40 feet from here to here. So I will click on the tape measure, click on these endpoints. This isn't going to be precise, but it will be precise enough for my needs. And you can see in the text field it says 74 feet. Don't click on anything, don't move the mouse, just type 40 foot symbol, enter, and enter again. And now the whole floor plan has been sized proportionately. I'm going to look at it from the top down to make tracing it easier. Click the rectangle on the opposite corners and I can see through this only because I have this set on view face style x-ray. If I unchecked x-ray, it would be opaque. So I'll go back to view face style x-ray and I'll proceed to trace the walls. This isn't going to be precisely the same as the sketch underneath, but it will be as good as I can get it. Looks like this is a wall that supports a bookshelf, so I'll just use the rectangle tool. And now I want to give some thickness to the walls, so I will select them holding down the shift key. You can see that the plus and minus sign is there. That means I can add and subtract from the selections. And then I'll click offset. Then I can offset it in or out, and it looks like offsetting out will make more sense. I'm going to drag the cursor out, click 6 for 6 inches, and there's my wall thickness. To use the offset tool inside, I will select two walls, click offset. I'm going to type 5 this time. And I'm going to use a combo of offset and the pencil. I can't just offset one wall. So what I'm going to do is select this, click on move, hit and release control, slide the copy out and type 5. And then with the move tool, I'll stretch this wall forward and then select that little segment and delete it. Oh, look what happened when I moved this. Let me undo. I am just going to add a little bit. With SketchUp, you never know how exactly things are going to work. I'm going to delete this segment. That will help when I push-pull everything up. And delete that. And I've got some pretty tight quarters here, so I am going to select this line, select Move, 
press and release control, drag this over, type 5, and then do the same thing here. and finish all this off with the pencil. Okay, looks good. Let's do the stairs now. I'm going to draw a line from here to here and here and here. And I'm doing these lines all separate because I'll need them to be separate for my next step, which is going to be using the divide tool. I have eight stairs here. I'm going to select the line, right click, choose divide, and then move the cursor until I get eight segments and click. Now I can't see those divisions, so I'll go to Styles, Edit, and click on Endpoints. And now I can see the divisions and draw stairs from them. And I'll do the same thing here. Clean this up a bit. And this looks good, so I'm going to push pull all the walls up. And since I removed all the dividing lines in between them, all the walls selected together. Let's make it 10 feet tall. I need to give some thickness to the floor too. I have a floor here and here, but I don't have one here and here because it's they're not highlighting like they did here. So I'm going to need to draw one in. And what I can do is draw a rectangle. Sometimes I can draw just one big rectangle. Sometimes I'll have to draw multiple smaller ones. Oh, looks like it all filled. Let's delete that line. And notice how this is gray and this is white because when SketchUp makes faces, they don't always go with the top face up. So I can click Reverse Face and fix that. Now I'll select and push Pull Up, Type 6. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Oh, that, this all pushed pulled up together. These did not, so I can inference match these floors to the ones I just lifted. And now I've got a floor surface. So what's needed to be done now is to bring in component doors and furniture and fixtures We'll do a little of that. Let me bring in a front door here. I'm going to go I'm going to go back to the opaque face style cuz it gets a little hard to read. And notice I've got some random lines. Let's see if I can delete them with no damage. 
This is from when I pushed pulled. I'm going to put a door in right here. So I'm going to go to components, construction, click on doors low poly, That looks like a nice one. I'll download it. And move it into place. I can't see through the window here because this because the wall has thickness. Looks like I've got some lines to erase just a minute so back to the door to fix this because the wall has thickness i can't see through the glazing on it i'm going to draw a rectangle from here to here and let's see if i can push pull it through and that fixed it. I need to put a step here. I'm going to use the rotated rectangle to put a step there. And push pull it up. Let's go inside and delete that line. Now I've got to model these stairs, and I will do that by offsetting each one seven inches. And push pulling it up another seven. The nice thing about SketchUp is it helps you visualize in 3D if you're having a hard time imagining what this is looking like, then this helps you do it. And I'm missing a surface here. So now I can push pull that up. Well, I'm not going to do the whole staircase, but you can see how it's done here. Let's go back to view face style x-ray and bring in some furnishings. Let's bring in a bed for here. Under Component Sampler, there's a dynamic bed. This symbol means dynamic. And what that means is it has code in it that lets it do things. And we'll see what that means. Go to View, Toolbars, and turn on the Dynamic Components menu. When I click the hand on it, the bed takes on different shapes. Double click any toolbar to dock it. And let's bring in a shower. This looks interesting. Let's put this one in. And there you have it.